comes on him. Ball gets airborne. And he's, he's that sinker's not sinking quite as much. He wants ground balls. He's just fine with early contact. Maddox, junior right-hander out of Pearl, Mississippi. Missed most of last year with an elbow injury. We're ready to get started. Amani uh, Larry will lead off for Mississippi State. And we are underway in Oxford with a first pitch fastball in for a strike. Three home runs and 17 driven in for Larry on the season, and the breaking ball is waved at. It's a Mississippi State team that is 21 and 12 overall, just their eighth road game of the season, three and four in opponent stadiums. And a ground ball to short, backhanded pickup by Braden Randall, and takes care of Larry. One down. One down for switch hitting David Mershon, who's hitting 333 on the season with a couple of home runs and 23 driven in. He's a sophomore from Taylor, South Carolina. And he rips the first pitch over to the Ole Miss dugout, nothing and one. Mershon's coming off of a series against Georgia where he went three for 10. And he drives this one high into center field. Ethan Groff is underneath it. Two down and with two out. One of the best hitters in the SEC, Dakota Jordan, strides to the plate. This guy's pretty good, huh? Yeah, this is the way you want to face him, too. Get the first two in the order out, so at least Jordan comes up with nobody on base. But he's had quite a year. Draft eligible sophomore, just his second year in the program, but the numbers have been phenomenal. Blown away on the first offering. Top five in the league in average home runs and RBI. The sinker misses low. Looked like a changeup on a radar gun, 82. Here's the 2 0. Two and one. Jordan fourth in the league in average, fifth in home runs, fifth in RBI. And the fastball misses away three and one. He's also top ten in slugging and on base. Full count. There's that good two-seamer, that sinker that you want to see. Good late action right underneath the bat right there, Dakota Jordan. Get it back to a 3-2 count. Swing and a miss. Got him on the sinker, and he finishes. Sixes tonight from Steven. Purdue transfer. We'll start with Luke Hill. And the first pitch fastball is popped up into center field. Hijack puts that one away, one down. And that'll bring Andrew Fisher up. No miss team that is 11th in the SEC in batting average at 272. Ninth in home runs. But a very average offensive team. Seven of Fisher's 13 home runs have come in league play. First pitch strike as he took one from Steven. Let the shift on for the pull hitting Fisher with Larry playing in shallow right field. One ball and two strikes. I didn't tell if that was Kohler or Mershon left at the shortstop position. 
stylistically from here, they look the same. Yeah, I think they left they left Mershon at short, and Kohler went over, replaced him on that right hand side. That's correct. After we got to see Kohler's number, when he turned his back to the plate. Nobody wears their pants like Mississippi State. Grounded foul of first. And first base coach Chris Cleary stays one and two. Thirteen home runs on the season for Fisher. Three of them came in one game against South Carolina three weeks ago. I was on the ACC All-Freshman team with Duke last year. Change-ups this at bat to Fisher. That one foul back through one that 0-2 that missed off the plate. It's, it's probably Stevens' third best against the left-handers. Trying to get Fisher all the way out in front. This is the guy you don't want to beat you in this lineup. New Jersey native, and he lifts one to center field. There is very little wind in the ballpark here near sunset tonight. And he pitches for the first two outs. And that'll bring Ethan Lajay to the plate. Lajay is from Abbeville, Louisiana. A couple of stops. On his college baseball tour, starting with Nichols State in the COVID year, played six games for him in 20. And he went to Delgado Community College, where the Brewers used their 16th round pick on him a couple of years ago. He was a Juco All American at Delgado. And he gets hit by a pitch. Only the second hit batter of the season for Cal Steven. You can see Johnny Long, the catcher, wanted that fastball elevated, wanted it in. and. He got both. It was just a little bit too elevated, a little bit too far in. So after two quick outs, Leger standing on first base with two outs. And that brings Ethan Groff to the plate. <laughs> Groff strings, uh, swings right through the fastball, nothing in one. Groff's a senior from Orlando, started his college career at Tulane. We played three seasons with the Green Wave. A half swing and a fastball up. He went. He's got Klein down the first baseline. Eddie Newsom's got the plate for this SEC crew tonight. Steve State makes an adjustment after that one. That's where they were trying to go. Elevate the fastball, try to get Groff to swing through it, and he got a piece of it. Honestly, just missed it. That's usually location. If you get a swing, you think you're going to swing and miss. We come back with a slider down and away right here, see if you can get underneath that bat. Runner on the move. Fastball fouled straight back. Lejay's perfect on the base pass this season, three for three. Both of these teams like to run. Yeah, and they've both been successful. Ole Miss 39 of 44 on the year. State's 39 of 43. Not going this time in a pickup attempt. Backhanded blind pickup by Hunter Hines over at first. O2 to Ethan Groff. Runner not going again. Swing and a miss on that slider. And that'll finish him off. Will, you get a doubleheader tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm a workaholic, Kyle. We got an Ole Miss Where spring festival tomorrow on the football field. Here's Hunter Hines, 295 average with eight home runs. Five of those have come in league play. And off speed pitch floats in for a strike, 101. We may have a Jordan Rogers sighting at the ballpark tonight. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. 
One and two to Hines. You get him a ticket? He's got stuff up. And a swing and a miss back to back K's for Riley Maddox. Early steins so far for Riley Maddox. Fastball's been down. And then the slider feeds right off of it. So it comes out of his hand, looks similar. That's got a little bit more down than the slider. Back to back strikeouts to start for Maddox, who has not had a ton of swing and miss this year. 27 strikeouts and 36 and a third coming in. And a hit batter. Fourth of the season for Maddox. Uh, to answer your question, statistician to the stars, Greg Campbell tells me, get in price for tomorrow, 62 bucks. Really? We sold out tomorrow. They sold out Sunday too. Not that I'm aware of. Not yet. It depend on who wins the night. Could be. Here's Bryce Chance. Chance has hit safely in seven of eight. He's a sophomore from Ridgeland, Mississippi. And that one in the dirt skips away from Trenton Lyons. It's been an issue for Mike Bianco's team all season. His balls pass the catcher, whether they be pass balls or wild pitches. They're averaging one and a half per game. Maddox, you get a, a slider the pitch before that just kind of squirts out of his hand arm side. And that when he buries glove side down and away. Those are two different misses, both pretty big. This is a staff full of catchers and so to see the frustration in free 90s that are given up on both wild pitches and pass balls runner goes the throw to third is high and a stolen base for hijack who's now seven for seven on the base pass and so often I mean when you steal third base you're going to steal it watch this one two he's reading and goes and it's taken that extra if you, if you stop him if you wait just a minute or turn around and Hijack's not going to run on that one, but instead didn't stop. Momentum Cup going to third and a wild pitch and a stolen base. And a four pitch walk puts Chance aboard. Riley Maddox had retired the first four batters he faced, then a hit batter, a wild pitch, a bag, and a walk on four to Chance. Brings up an opportunity for the bottom third of the order, starting with Aaron Downs. Ole Miss coming off of back-to-back -back series sweeps on the road at number one Arkansas last week and prior to that at home against number 15 Kentucky. And here's an early visit from Mike Bianco to Riley Maddox. The Rebels have turned 22 double plays on the season. That's a good number. Top half of the league. Chance six of eight on the bases over at first. Ran inside on him. Two and oh. Again. Eight straight have missed the zone going back to the hit by pitch of hijack. Hijack, pardon me. That one finds the edge. Maddox two and three with a four four six ERA and off the handle up the middle tough play at second. Got him! And a double play turn by Lou. Mississippi State to challenge and to get a run across, and we'll see what impact that has on them in this game and perhaps in this series. A first pitch strike to Jackson Ross. I, I want to go back to that. It looked like Chris Limonis at the outset of the end of that half inning was upset with Bryce Chance for not going harder in his second base, and he was talking with his base runner. I, I, think, I think it may have been because he missed a steal sign. It, it potentially was that because if you run it on that spot, you get a chance to beat it out, and then obviously it breaks up the double play. It, it seemed like that's what it was, and by the time that stopped, 
too much time had passed to go back and and ask for the replay. So it would have been overturned. Yeah, regardless, his attention was on his player instead of challenging the call immediately yeah. and then ran out of time. Jackson Ross has seven home runs. He's driven in 31 this year. And he sends this one high down the right field line and deep into the corner and ends up in the last row and then back towards the woods. We got a, a ball in center field that was spotted by Eddie Newsom. Came over the wall. And so Connor Isaac sends that back onto the hill. One and two. Jackson Ross, senior out of Lakeland, Florida, swings another one up in the zone. Johnny Long turns around, and this one's going to be onto the screen. A lot of people have been watching Johnny Long videos this week, huh? Yeah. He got popular. Uh-huh. Something like that. Just a little emotion. Not too much emotion. Cal Steven delivers the one-two pitch. And this is a soft line drive. Just past the reach of Mershon. And Ross will reach for the first hit of the game for either side. Let's take you back to the top half of this inning and the would-be double play. I think, I mean, there was a little bit of hesitation, but I think the hesitation was worrying about whether or not the ball was, was going to get caught. But at any rate, that's an interesting route, too. A little mm -hmm. bit wide on that secondary. I mean, the one that matters, the play at first base, and ultimately it wasn't challenged. That I think it's pretty clear it would have been overturned and, and more importantly and that would have given state a run. Here's Will Furness with a swing and a miss. How many runs wins this game? That's early. I know. Uh, five. Okay. So one's big. When the wind is not blowing out, these teams don't score a ton of runs anyway. Ole Miss is under seven runs a game. Mississippi State not quite at seven and a half. So offensively, even though they're not first rounders, maybe on the mound. Ball and a strike to Will Furness. 232 average, 50 points higher in league play than non conference and Furness. Set a pitch away. Hitters count here two and one. Second year as a starter at Ole Miss. 32 starts at DH last year. Handful at first base and a big cut two and two. Change up right there by Steven. The fastball has been 92, 93 so far. He's got a little bit more in the tank. Last weekend he was 95, 96. But that change up six or seven mile an hour velocity difference but good late sink to get underneath that bat 2-2 Two -two pitch upstairs by the way th the official word is that a head coach has approximately 30 seconds to challenge a call but he has to inform the crew within 10 seconds that he's considering it and then there's a little bit of leeway to make the decision but if you don't tell anybody within the first 10 seconds that you're even thinking about it that they will move on. Well, Scott Klein, the first base umpire, when when Chris Lamonis did make the sign to say, I want to I want to challenge you, have you guys take a look, immediately pointed to his watch to say it, it's too much time has gone by and you can't do it now. Full count to Furnace. Looking for his first home run in lead play. And chases that one up and out of the zone at 92. Second K. That scouting report right there because I mean there, there was one strike within the zone. There was one strike thrown in that entire bat. Both times that Furnace swung through it, it was elevated fastballs out of way, did it on the first pitch of the bat, and then right there to finish it. Here's Trenton Lyons getting the start behind the play. And a throw over to first. 
scrambles Jackson Ross back to the bag. And we welcome those of you who watched Arkansas notch its seventh straight win against South Carolina in a four to three victory on the softball diamond. Tom Hart alongside Kyle Peterson. Game one of three between Mississippi State and Ole Miss in a series that dates to 1893. No score in the second inning and a couple of throws over to keep Jackson Ross near the bag. Trenton Lyons is at the plate for Ole Miss and Cal Steven who's been red hot over his last three starts for Mississippi State is on the mound with a 4-2 and two record in his ninth start of the year. The 1-0. Big cut and a miss, 1-1. Biggest story so far through an inning and a half, the decision for Mississippi State not to challenge an inning-ending double play in the top of the second inning, which likely would have led to the first run of the game. 1-1 one -one to Lions. And this one's muscled into shallow center. Checked down by Mershon. And two down. So leadoff man on in Jackson Ross. He had a clean single over the shortstop's head. And now with two out, Judd Udemark comes to the plate. A little Mark Knopfler, Dire Straits walk-up music. I like the fact that Judd Udemark is a throwback. Swing and a miss, nothing and one. You a dire straits guy. Went on a road Giselle. trip. Yeah, went on a road trip with my dad and my older brother in a Volkswagen Jetta that had a cassette player, and the only cassette tape we had was that exact album. So you know both sides of it. Mm -hmm. Popped up. A little bit of room behind the plate for Long, who will chase it all the way to the wall, and that's what would have been two rows deep. Yeah, that was the only entertainment for about, I don't know, 12 hours of road trip time between Columbia, Missouri, and Osawatomie, Kansas. Osawat? Yep. Osawatomie. Back then, kids, you didn't have to look up the lyrics online. They came on this little jacket that yeah. was printed inside the cassette. Oh, I remember those days. The 0-2. That's a fastball that just misses off the plate, one and two. Interesting contrast in these two programs. Mississippi State has been a little bit up and down, but still top 25 team coming in. Even money in league play. Ole Miss has lost seven consecutive games. Three straight conference series including back-to-back -back sweeps and Cal Steven this thing make the SEC tournament like they did last year this is an important one how crazy is it when you watch this game these are the two teams that did not make it to the conference tournament last year mm -hmm. with all the history it's two of the last three national champions but pretty important for both here as we near the midway mark in the SEC and a swing and a miss for Logan Kohler as we start off the third inning and they'll put the Shift down with Andrew Fisher going to the right side. Kohler hitting 218. He's driven in 12. Batting in the eight hole for Mississippi State. And a breaking ball in the dirt from Riley Maddox. Maddox two and three on the season. This is his eighth start. And 36 and a third coming in. 27 strikeouts against 12 walks. A couple of years ago, he was pitching out of the Ole Miss bullpen. And they missed most of last year with an elbow injury. Up the middle off of his leather, played by Fisher, and he takes care of Logan Kohler. We're going to take you back to the key play so far tonight. It was a lone opportunity for a score. Aaron Downs puts this ball on the ground, a chance for a double play for Ole Miss. They get it turned officially, but Mississippi State had an opportunity to challenge. They didn't would look to be safe at first. Yeah, first and third, one out right there, and in on the fist, you can see Chris Simonos goes to it. Then he pointed to his watch to say, I did it in enough time. But Scott Klein's the one that was the deciding factor. The first base umpire said no, and the play stood. And so the base is empty for Johnny Long. And a strike in for Johnny Long, the senior from 
Naples, Florida, has played at a couple of different spots before State. Florida Gulf Coast and then Pitt. And he was the main character in the uh, bench clearing brouhaha with Georgia game two of their series last weekend. Two down. And that'll take us back to the top of the order for State. Amani Larry's 0 for 1 with the ground out to short. Senior from Bossier City, Louisiana. Was at East Central Community College and then New Orleans. He went just one for nine in the Georgia series. And chops one high to the right side. Play by Hill. And that'll close if the series in the SEC is big. This one, though, goes back to the 1800s. It feels bigger, I know, to both fan bases. Does, does it feel bigger to you and your program on a weekend like this? It is bigger to a program like ours and like theirs. It's a, uh, it's a big deal in our state. Baseball is a big deal here, and it means a lot to our program. Hey, Lem, Dakota Jordan's had, obviously had a good year last year, but this year has been a little bit different. One of the tops in the SEC in a bunch of different offensive categories. What, what makes him so good? He can just do everything. It's just a very mature kid. Um, hits for power, hits for, you know, hits for average, can run can do a little bit of everything, and he's still just scratching it, man. He's got yeah. such a high upside. We appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Should be a fun weekend of baseball here. The series, as I mentioned, dates to 1893. Abner Doubleday invented baseball in 1839. <laughs> Braden Randall, freshman from Rockwall, Texas, a nine-hole hitter, leads off the third. Well, as Chris Lamonis just said, baseball's big in this state. Sinking shot to the gap. What a play by Isaac. Well, he's got great closing speed and able to make up the ground into the gap. Look how perfect this route is, too, because off the left-handed bat, that ball's going to be moving away from Isaac the entire time. But times that dive perfectly. And a good job, too, by Chance out in left field backing this up because even if he dives and doesn't get there, Chance is going to get it at least hold the hitter to a double instead. That diving play by Isaac. A beautiful first out of the inning. So here's the leadoff man, Luke Hill, who flew out to center field his first time up. Hill transferred in from Arizona State, made 54 starts with the Sun Devils last year, was honorable mention Pac-12 performer for Willie Bloomquist in the dirt one and one. So Mike Bianco made a shift last series. Hill had been the starting shortstop. And he flipped Hill and Braden Randall. And the idea was, listen, we still think this guy's a star. At the end of fall, he was the best hitter on the team. But you're kind of feeling it on both sides, both in the field and at the plate. So moved him to second to try and take some pressure off. Two down. And Andrew Fisher coming up. And it does feel Fisher's had a great offensive year. It feels like if, if Ole Miss is going to make a run, Again, at the end of this weekend, you're halfway through the regular season conference schedule in the SEC. Luke Hill's got to be a major part of it. Um, was a, a big-time transfer portal guy out of Arizona State, and the, the, the offense just hasn't carried the way that they thought it had, but he's still got a little time. So here's Manasquan, New Jersey native Andrew Fisher. Started his college career at Duke last year. Had a couple of home runs against Arkansas last week, including two in one game in the second game of that series. Little dribbler up the middle, and Mershon makes it look pretty easy. One, two, three innings. Thank you, Alyssa. We're in the top of the fourth inning. Two, three, and four spots due up for State. Starting with David Mershon, who was 0 for 1 of the fly out to center. Elsewhere around the league, Kentucky leads Auburn 6 0. What a start for the Kentucky Wildcats. Fly ball to left field. And handled. Kentucky won the opener of that series. Now way out in front today. A win from Kentucky today. It'll be 13 and 1. <laughs> it's outrageous. Now it does. The second half of the schedule is a little bit different for Kentucky than the first. But it, it doesn't matter when you win them. They, they are piling them up early. One and zero. The first pitch to Dakota Jordan. Jordan had a great year last year for Mississippi State, 
and he has really taken it to another level this season. Fourth in the league in average, fifth in home runs, fifth in RBI, fourth in walks. Top 10 in slugging and on base. And the 2-0 is lasered to right center field. Utamark tracks it down, nearly overran it, and Dakota Jordan has the first hit of the game for Mississippi State coming in the fourth. A two-seamer for Maddox has been good today, and it is right here, too. I mean, you can see the late action. This is just a good hitter doing what good hitters do. Pulls those hands in, even in a 2-0 plus count, not trying to hook everything to left field. Got that fastball that was running in on his hands, bailed it up out to right center, and Dakota Jordan's on for the first hit of the night. And the pickup attempt got away. Jordan thought about breaking for second. And then we get it to him. him second. Yeah. Well, maybe he's not going to get him second. He pointed to second. Scott Klein would not be good at charades. Second. No, no, no. You know, that's not what I meant. I, I just was pointing. I pointed there, but I was just kidding. Hunter Hines at the plate, and the count 1-0. Eight home runs, 31 driven in for Hines, who is 0 for 1 tonight with a strikeout. Five of his eight home runs have come in a league play. It's a Mississippi State team that works to produce offense. 11th in the league in home runs. They score seven and a half runs per game, and this one driven to center. Groff coming in for it, and Jordan will be held to first. Two down, but they have 21 sacrifice bunts and 39 stolen bases. The 21 sack bunts compared to just five for Ole Miss. Yeah. Offensive approach been a little bit different. Here's Connor Hyzak. Nothing in one. Isaac is a senior from Goffstown, New Hampshire. Started his career at Virginia Commonwealth. And a count nothing in two. Freshman year at VCU was on the Atlantic 10 All-Rookie Team. Made 48 starts. Part of the Chapel Hill Regional Team with four home runs in their first two games there. A couple of years ago. Now a senior. Here's the 0-2. Caught just a piece of it. Chopped a third. Fisher across the grass makes the play. Ole Miss head coach Mike Bianco. We were talking with uh, Chris Lamonis a couple of innings ago about the enormity of baseball in the state. You guys have the, the game again uh, on May 1st down in, in Pearl. Why is it so important to folks in the state? You know, it always has been. It was, you know, before Chris and I were here, Ron Polk and Jake Gibbs and Don Kessinger. Uh, it's, big in the, it's big in the south. And, of course, I think one of the big things is there's such a distance between the closest major league park. But, you know, and then, you know, you got to credit the kids. You know, us, you know, State and Southern Miss, you know, three really good programs that have had a lot of success. Hey, Mike, for Maddox on the mound tonight, uh, two league starts coming in. Numbers were fine, but not great. Tonight, the sinker and the slider look look better. What have you seen? Right, you're exactly right, KP. You know, he lost it a little bit there in a second. You know, he's a Mississippi kid, and the adrenaline got yeah. to him. He, he hit a guy with a slider, and, you know, he kind of lost it there for about four or five pitches, but got back into it. But you're right, his stuff's been real good tonight. Mike, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Thank All right, guys, appreciate you. Three-hole hitter. Ethan Leger leads off the inning. That one into the seats. This is a series that has belonged to Mississippi State. It's been over 3,200 days since Ole Miss has won a series against Mississippi State. They play in the Governor's Cup May 1st down in Pearl. Seven straight series wins for State, but this is one of those things when it comes to rivalries that they can't decide on the record. They can't even agree on how many games they play. Upstairs two and two. And so Steve Robertson broke that down this week. He does a fantastic job covering state and all sports. 
And he went all the way back in the record books to find those missing games. And I know nobody at Ole Miss would want to admit it, but the record keeping seems to be a little bit more intact on the state side of things. Fly ball to right. And there's one down with Ethan Groff coming to the plate. Here's where the differences lie. State says they met 480 times. Mississippi, Ole Miss says uh, you're six off. But there's six games that Steve went back and found that weren't accounted for on the Ole Miss side. But what they do agree upon is that Mississippi State has uh, one more. We can agree on ties. <laughs> yes. Too. That's important. We, we can meet somewhere. That's, let's start with ties. Steve's got an upcoming biography on Duty Noble. So he, he that'll be interesting to read, won't it? Uh, do you read, KP? I have read. <laughs> yes. So this past week he wrote a chapter about the 1923 Mississippi then A&M game. And that's where he found the first dispute in the record keeping. And so, like any good journalist, why not keep digging? You get an advanced copy of this book. You get chapter by chapter at this point. I should. <laughs> Two down, four strikeout for Cal Steven. Most of my books have already been colored in, so that would be a nice change. Here's Jackson Ross at a leadoff single in the second. Fly ball high to right field, lost by Jordan, and now he relocates it. And it's in the fifth inning. It's Cags at 18 now? Make 18. Check the old stat pack here, Tony. What do you got? Ground ball foul of third. 18. That Ron Burgundy there, and I, I shouldn't have. I just say Cags has 18 now. That sounds a lot better than Cags has 18 now. You but he does have 18. We'll put a question mark in the teleprompter. This one will stay fair. Fisher's got it, and the throw is too high. Turning and headed to second is Chance. And Mississippi State has a runner in scoring position for the second time tonight. Yeah, and for Fisher, he charges this one, but after this first hop, you know the ball's going to be spinning weird, and he stays back and waits just to make sure he doesn't get that in-between hop. He's got enough time to react, but then you got to speed up the throw. As he speeds up the throw, Sails on him right there. There's nothing that Ross can do at first base. And a little swinging bunt right there. It goes a two-base error. And State's got a runner in scoring position with nobody out. Brings Aaron Downs up. By the way, since 2017, there have been four college baseball players who have hit 30 home runs or more. Zach Caglione leads the way with 33 last year. Fouled off the dirt. Nothing in one. Ivan Melendez hit 32 for Texas and 22. Brock Wilkin of Wake hit 31 last year, and Cam Fisher of Charlotte hit 30 last year. The guy at Georgia surpassed those totals. Condon? Yeah. Might hit 40. <laughs> I mean, isn't that Two just more last night? outrageous? Pick up attempt towards second. How many did you say since 17? Four? Well, yes, yeah, since 17, only four players in college baseball have hit 30 home runs or more. I bet there's more than four this year. Bunt popped up. It hits the turf. And play made by Lyons from behind the plate. The sacrifice moves Chance to third. That's the 22nd sack on the season for State. And that'll bring Logan Kohler up. Chris Bryant hit 31 in 2013. He out homered something like 220 teams in college baseball that year. And at this point, Condon has a higher home run rate per game than Pete Incavilia did when he set the record with 48. 
Yeah, because when Incavillia did it, there was no 56-game schedule. You could play as many as you wanted to. <laughs> you could start whenever you wanted. They Oklahoma State played 65 regular season games every year. They probably ended total. up in Omaha. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Inky hit .64 per game. Condon threw last night at .68. Ground ball to the right side with the shift on. That will get the run home. And Mississippi State takes a 1-0 lead here in the fifth. Get them over, get them in right there. Downs gets the bunt down. Chance can advance to third base. And Ole Miss into the shift but not bringing the infield in, which I totally agree with here when you're in the fifth inning. Make sure you get the out. They do right there, but State's on the board first without a hit in the inning. By the way, Condon is also hitting 484 coming into tonight's second best in Division One. So Condon has 23. Kags has 18 now. Montgomery's hit two tonight. He's got 19 now. Condon is two for three tonight. His average of 489. His average, he was hitting 484 and he went up five points. What did Magadan hit? We talked about this last week. 525? I think that's right. To put it in perspective, yeah, Dave Magadan hit 525 for Bama. He's having, I, don't, I can't think of a basketball equivalent, but he's having a Joe Burrow type season. Yeah. Some idiot went on SEC Network Radio on Thursday and said, you just got to show me, Condon's going to show me he can do it in the league. And then later on that night, he hit two home runs <laughs> in the league. Is that your last time on SEC Radio? <laughs> so, uh, Peter, Bo Peter Burns, you boy, Chris Doran, probably aren't going to invite me back. Mike Getz of Milwaukee is the last Division One player to hit over 480 in a season. He hit 493 in 06. And Condon is just obliterating all of those marks. Johnny Long reaches with two down. Now take us back to the top of the order and Amani Larry. Larry is over two with a couple of ground outs. This one off the tape and reached for and handled by Randall. Game. We're going to play some seven on seven, have a dunk contest, a hot dog eating contest, Kyle Peterson lookalike contest, whatever we need to make up. That'll get him in the door. Are you uh, partaking in said hot dog eating contest? How does this work? I'm not quite sure. I will be present and I will be available. Will Furness is 0 for 1 with a strikeout. So you're willing to? Yes, yes, okay. I'm willing. What I'm worried about, because I'm just such a go-getter, yeah, Joey Chestnut's going to be here. Like the, the pro, the champ. You don't want to show him up. I don't want to show him up. Like I am afraid that, and I don't know how many tens of thousands of people will be there, and millions, of course, watching on American sports television with Jordan Rodgers and myself, uh, but um, they call it a reversal of fortune in an eating contest, competitive eating, and when it goes down that, but doesn't stay down. Yeah, I'm afraid that reversal is going to happen about 7.30 tomorrow night when I'm sitting next <laughs> to you. So if you could consider not doing it, I think that would be better for those in your general vicinity right now. Outside, full count. What was the movie that the pie-eating contest went south fast? Uh, with the kid? Yeah, with the kid. John, was John Candy in it? No, that was the old 96. <laughs> that was the Remember old that? 96. Great outdoors. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Popped up and out of play. By the way, Joey Chestnut's hot dog eating record in 10 minutes. What's your guess? Uh, 67. 76. Ground ball against the ship goes left of the bag and through. And there's a leadoff single for Will Furness. This one into the seats on the left side. So that's 3 o'clock central. Finished there at 5. 
You didn't know the time tell right there, did you? <laughs> no, I was not that's, aware. That's what time. Okay, good. I'll be there. I'm going to write that down on the back of my hand. An ink pen. Here's Trenton Lyons, who's handling the catching now for Ole Miss. They've been through now three different catchers. Lyons, a middle infielder. He still takes ground balls at short during batting practice, but the key concern was just receiving, which had been a, an issue for Ole Miss this year. So I finish here at 5, get across campus here. Uh, game time tomorrow night here is 7.30, mm -hmm. I'm told. Plenty of time. Fly ball into left center field. And the shortstop going back is able to make the catch. It's Mershon. One down with Judd Udemark coming up. The Ole Miss comes into this game, KP, 11th in the league in hitting, ninth in the league in home runs. They draw a lot of walks. That's top 10 nationally. That's good. Sack flies, top 15 nationally. But they just haven't been able to put everything together on a seven-game losing streak. Where, where's the pivot point? How does Ole Miss change this? Uh, you got to have a couple guys bump up that haven't been there. We talked earlier about Hill, and I, I think it's really important to this offense, especially where he hits in this lineup. I mean, he's out of leadoff slot for Hill. 261 coming in. OPS is about 730. Mm. You get a jump there, then everybody else is, or at least guys after him are hitting with somebody on base, and that starts to affect the whole lineup. Nothing and two to you tomorrow. And that one is in the dirt, kicks away from Johnny Long and over to the on deck circle. And Furnace advances on the wild pitch. Yeah, just bearing a slider. It comes after the swings that they had seen Udemark take. He knew he was going to get another one right there. When he swung through it, he swung through a few sliders first time up. But that one down in the zone. Johnny Long just couldn't keep it in front. Another one and a swing and a miss for Udemark. Two down. That is the fifth K for Cal Steven. Yeah, if he faces Steven again, that's all he's going to see. It, it, the, the slider Udemark just hadn't been able to recognize. He's punched him out twice so far. That time was slider heavy to get. And out right there with Ole Miss having a guy in scoring position. The first guy tonight that's been in scoring position for Ole Miss. Braden Randall was robbed of a hit on a sinking fly ball into left center field. Here's the 1 0. The infamous pie eating contest was from the movie Stand By Me. Yes, and it was the kid. The kid started the chain reaction. Yeah. Do you remember the kid's name? No, I didn't see his face, but I don't remember his name. He had a nickname that was not very friendly. It started with Lard. Yeah, now I do. Two down for Caboose. <laughs> That's right. Braden Randall. High fly ball pulled foul down the right side, and this one will hit the seats. To your point, too, about this Ole Miss offense, I, you need some production in the bottom third. Whoever is in there, you need a few guys just to, to get on a heater for a few weeks to where all the, all the pressure isn't necessarily on one through five, one through six in this lineup. Now would be a good time to start. Two and two to Braden Randall. And the freshman takes a healthy cut at this one. 
Sends it to left center field and catch made Dakota Jordan. Interesting end of the season last year. Dakota Jordan entered the transfer portal for about a day. Less than 24 hours. And he's the guy that State really couldn't afford to lose in many ways. I mean, he's a cornerstone of this offense, but also a top prospect. He was a football stud coming out of high school. Chris Lamonis described him as a 5 tool player. Bazooka arm, the hit tools really stands out. He's from Jackson Academy after starting at Canton Academy in Canton, Mississippi. And he committed to play both football and baseball at State. Committed to Mike Leach on the football field. Swing and a miss. And he said at the time, he said, well, I, I'm confident I can do it because I watched Brad Compass do it. I watched old Mrs. Jerry on Ely do it. And he was a record setting re running back and wide receiver. Was fifth in the nation in home runs his senior year. And four short of the record for state home runs in his classification set by Hunter Renfro in 2010. Whatever happened to that guy? He done all right. Swing and a fly ball, center field. And Gropp all the way back to the wall, and it's over the wall and gone. Gropp lost his hat. The ball goes over, and Mississippi State takes a 3-0 lead on the 15th home run of the season for Jordan. That look like a routine fly ball off the bat, and it just kept going and going. It's a strong dude. I mean, Chris Lamona's talked about five tool. It's a break a ball on the inside part of the plate. Think about the last two locations when Dakota Jordan was up there. Fastball inside on his hands, drove it to right center. That time, break a ball, it was inner half. Pulls his hands in, gets the barrel to it, drives it out to center, and extends the state lead. 101 off the bat and a shot that traveled 397 feet. And a 3-0 state lead here in the sixth. Just the third home run allowed by Riley Maddox this season. Hunter Hines has a count at 1-1. And it's pulled foul. Low and in, two and two. Seventh in state history with 46 career home runs. Up the middle, over the bag. Third straight hit to start this sixth inning against Riley Maddox, who's sitting at 70 pitches. There is action in the Ole Miss bullpen. Yeah, for state, they had one hit in the game coming into this inning. You get the leadoff on single by Mershon, then Dakota Jordan rides one out to center. Hunter Hines hits a missile back up the middle. And three runs feels like a lot tonight, especially the way that Cal Stevens been on the mound for Mississippi State. He's gone. Got her. Isaac looks at a first pitch strike. Nothing in one. Isaac sends a shot into center field. Fourth straight hit given up by Maddox. His last two hitters at sinker just not sinking as much as it was. Maddox had good stuff first five innings. That bunt single gets him into the stretch. And don't overestimate that because he hasn't been in the stretch very much today. Since then, the home run, Hines gets him back into the stretch with the single. And Isaac rips one right back up the middle. It's an interesting weekend for Chris Lamonis and Mississippi State in that Georgia series, to say the least. And pitch clock violation. 
And Bianco, did he get balled? Sorry. You can see they reset the pitch clock early. And that, that was that move right there. Started to come set and then stopped as he was starting to come set right there. And Eddie Newsom called him on it. So the corners are in now with first base open and nobody out. And it's 1 0 to Bryce Chance. Chance was timing up a big cut. He was. One for six chance was in the A&M series was hitting 243 after the final game of that one his average is up nearly 30 points since. And a ground ball up the middle. A run will score the throw over gets the first out of the inning but Hunter Hines. Adds to the state lead. Now for another that one I am a little bit surprised Ole Miss didn't bring the infield in. you already down three and. Just a good job by chance to recognize middle infield back really all infield back you get a ground ball. Anywhere on the infield, especially up the middle, going to score a run. Now with one out, they will bring the infielder. There and Downs at the plate. He bounced into a double play his first time up, laid down a sacrifice last time. Downs has struck out 24 times in the season in fairly limited playing time. He's got a K rate of 32 percent. One and one. Junior from Pella, Iowa. What well, Pella, Iowa's famous for? Sure. Childhood home of Wyatt Earp. It's amazing the stuff that comes out of your mouth when challenged sometimes. No Pella windows. Kyle Corver. No, Kyle Corver's Ankeny Iowa. Close. I, I think I'm right on Kyle Corver. I'd like to issue a challenge to that. And yes, I was aware of Pella Windows, Pella Manufacturing Company. You thought Wyatt Earp trumped him right there? Downs is a great high school football player, Pella High School. Broke his fibula and dislocated his ankle his senior year, so he moved to Mississippi where he's going to play high school baseball to finish out his senior year with a cast on his leg. I think it's amazing, though, that they named an entire city after a window company. Runners at the corners and Logan Kohler coming up. And that'll do it. For Riley Maddox. Five and two thirds innings for Maddox, giving up a lot of heart. So Logan Kohler, who's 0 for 2, but both of his ground outs have produced runs. And he sends his line drive into the gap in left center. That's going to get down. Another run comes home. Kohler's got his third ribby of the game, and State's got a 5 0 lead. I like the approach by Kohler right now. I mean, you get, you get a bullpen arm coming in. You're going to sit first pitch fastball, assuming that's what you're going to get with runners on first and third. He got it a little bit elevated, but Kohler's short to it. Fifth hit of the inning. For Mississippi State, who had one hit in the first five innings total. And now the catcher, nine hole hitter, Johnny Long. Well, Johnny Long was not eligible to play in the series finale against Georgia. He was the main character in the scuffle between the Bulldogs and the Bulldogs. That was kind of cleaned up overnight by the conference office and two players ineligible to play that game on Sunday. But it looked at the outset over a 46 minute, I think it was, game delay that they were going to be missing a ton of guys for that game. We, we talked to Chris Lamone. It's not a not to rehash the whole thing, but what what do you teach your guys and how do you talk to them about composure? And he said, well, listen, Johnny knows what he did wrong and 
we don't want to repeat that part of it. But the biggest thing is we just thrown a guy out at the plate. We're coming to the plate in the bottom half of the inning. 14,000 people losing their minds. We had real momentum. Yeah. And by making the mistake that Johnny made, he robbed State of that momentum. Taking all the way. And that's a four-pitch walk to Johnny Long to load the bases. Well, they end up losing the game. Mm -hmm. and the momentum goes away. Georgia holds on. State ended up winning the series. But Bianco out again out of that Ole Miss dugout. State's got four in the inning, five total today. Bases loaded. One out, top of the order coming up, and the Rebs will go back. Um, the, the first half of the season was a gauntlet for LSU. Second half does start to open up, but they're down 6-1 to Tennessee tonight. A loss right there. LSU would be 3-10 and in the league. Monty Larry is looking for his first. And a strike. I, mean, I, I would say this, and I don't think we're to that point yet, but the, the last two years, the national champion, but I guess two years prior to this, the national champion has not made it to the SEC tournament. And I, I don't think it's outside of the realm of possibility for LSU to not make it to the SEC tournament. Mitch Morrell looks at that one, Miss outside. Ole Miss won it all in 22. State the year before. Well, Missouri playing much better. You heard the highlight there. In a dogfight, had the lead late against Georgia. And game's now in the 10th inning, tied at five. Auburn sitting at two and ten. So, boy, it's going to be really interesting. If the second half of the conference play plays out like the first did, then you're looking at LSU, Ole Miss, and Auburn in the mix with Missouri in terms of who will make it. Chopper to third. Long throw across the diamond. Had a chance two series. Florida run ruled him. Vandy run ruled him last weekend. Vandy got run ruled themselves tonight. A&M 15-0 in the opener at Bluebell. South Carolina beats Florida in the opener of that series. The Gators have now lost their last four in the SEC. Kentucky up 6-1 on Auburn after winning the opener. Arkansas up 5-0 on Alabama in the eighth. Want to know to David Mershon. And for a strike, 101. What is the real Florida? Uh, I think it's somewhere in between what we saw the first three weeks in the SEC and what we've seen the last four games. Seeing eye grounder gets through the right side, one run home. Here comes the second. The throw from Meyer is up the line. That gives an extra 90 to David Mershon. And Mississippi State has got it rolling now here in the sixth inning. That is the second hit of the inning for David Mershon, and this one drives home a pair. Yeah, Mershon got it started in this inning with a bunt single. This time drives in two. There's little things, and I understand it's an 8 nothing game at this point, but little things make a big difference. There's two little things that happened the last two plays that make a difference. And ground ball just a minute ago, Andrew Fisher, you're probably not going to turn two, but step on third base. Instead, the throw goes across. Runners advance 90 feet. Then on that ball, both come in to score. With a throw to home, sails over the top of the cutoff, man. And so now you got Mershon standing at second base. It's two straight plays to where Ole Miss has given Mississippi State extra bases. A wheel and a lob to second. And here's Dakota Jordan again. Last time he was at the plate, he set one. 397 feet just off the top of the wall left of center for a home run. Playing the perfect game All-American Showcase in San Diego his junior year of high school that caused him to miss his first football game of his senior year. And he still put up monster numbers. One and two.
All freshman team last year, second team freshman All-America, according to Perfect Game. They got up to a good start this season. March 11th, he was the SEC Co-Player of the Week. That week, he went 11 for 17. At 300 in the Georgia series. Runner on the move. Hitches up and a stolen base for David Mershaw. He's now 14 for 14. And the second time in state is sole third base tonight. Two-two, upstairs, full count. <laughs> Payoff pitch, swing and a miss. Low nine. They, they look very different. It's not just tonight, um, but this is a state team that I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. You look up at the end of the year and they're hosting. Two straight years after not getting into the NCAA tournament. Win tonight would put them seven and six in the league. Ball on a strike. Obviously, the year after the championship, they dealt with injuries to key players. And that kind of repeated itself, but they were just so kind of down for two seasons. What is an incredibly proud program. Another shot to left field that will tail right back to Chance. And there's two down now with the three-hole hitter coming to the plate. But you know what that means? The, what you just said, a chance to host? I mean, there's a chance that we could go and get ribs in the postseason. We saw our buddy Everett before the game. Uh -huh. He said ribs around next weekend. So it won't be there next weekend, but I would assume that He'd fire the ribs back up if they're hosting. I would hope so. Guy knows how to throw a party, doesn't he? For a bus driver. A little bit of dirt got into Johnny Long's eyes on that one in the behind the plate. AJ sends this one high into the sky, handled by Mershon at short, and it puts it away. Just six pitches needed by Cal Steven in the sixth. He's got an eight nothing left. Yes. Take that, Hart. <laughs> Jace Lavalette and I are not happy right now. Hunter Hines at the plate. It's an eight nothing Mississippi State lead. Run rule is in effect during conference games now. Good, bad, and different on the run rule. Good. I am it, good with it. Is it good? And there's a leadoff walk to put Hines aboard. I'm curious what impact it has on the losing team. And I know you could say, well, hey, you just saved some pitching for the losing team that was down 10 runs, you know, after seven innings of play, maybe. You could, yeah, but I, I, I guess I would say they earned it. In that way. Yeah, and I mean, listen, I don't think anybody wants to, I mean, they take, take, for example, yeah, the A&M game. It's 15 nothing to 7. So like, they ain't coming back. Let's just go back to the hotel. Let's just shut it, and we're going to try again tomorrow. Connor Heisek at the plate. He's one for two. Isaac sends a ground ball to short chance for two. Hill at second makes a turn and he is safe down the line. SEC demo. Our producer Bill Palladino said promo two, which is a softball promo, yet he put up promo one. I would rather promote our game tomorrow, which is on ESPN two. 
we will be here. Who's pitching tomorrow night for uh, LSU because they switched it up coming into this weekend? Uh, I th they had Gage think, Jump no, go it's tonight. Hol it's home in tomorrow. Yeah. It's home in tomorrow. It's the best promo we've Ruby. done in years. Seventh inning in Knoxville right now, 6 1. Tennessee leads LSU. Chance reached on an error in the fifth, came around to score, and he sends this one down the line at fair. Headed to third is Hyzak, and the throw comes down the line. States get two in scoring position with one out in the seventh. It's a double for Bryce Chance in his first hit of the game. About a half hour ago, it was a one nothing game, and Mississippi State had one hit. Since then, it has been a different Mississippi State offense. Seven runs in that sixth inning. They got two guys in scoring position, one out for bottom part of this order, which has been active tonight. Downs, Kohler, and Long have all scored. And here's the product of Pella, Iowa. You said that Pella, Iowa was named after the window company. That's not true. I said the window company was there. You are full of lies. First pitch strike. Is named after Pella of the Decapolis, where the Christians of Jerusalem found refuge during the Roman Jewish War of 70. Not 1270 or 1570 or 1770, just seven. 70. That was a minute ago. And they made windows. <laughs> the entire Decapolis had windows, all 10 cities. One and two. <laughs> Swing and a miss. The high school mascot for Pella High School should be the double pain, shouldn't it? If it's not, we should start the uh, campaign to get that changed. Home of Kyle Korver, by the way. Logan Kohler at the plate. He is driven in a run each and every time at the plate tonight. Two on a ground out and one on a single. Nothing in one. Did he go? He did not. Eric Gauthier, third base umpire. At that time, one and two. <laughs> two balls and two strikes. The mascot for Pella High School is the Dutch. One out. Line drive to left field and catch me by LJ. Here's Ethan Groff. Back to back game one series wins for Mizzou after being winless through the first three series. We started one and eight. Started one and eight and then swept Florida last weekend. So now five and eight in the league. Here they come. Nothing in two. Ethan Groff is over two with a couple of strikeouts. Cal Stevens scattered on cruise control. Uh, pretty good night so far for Mr. Stevens, and he's been efficient too. Five strikeouts up to that point. Got his six right there. Elevated the fastball. Really more did his last start. That, that fastball has played up in the zone for the most part. He's given up just two hits, both singles to Ole Miss. Only one runner has reached second base. And Stevens now still going strong here in the seventh. That's our all-state good hands play. And a first pitch strike. I, I misspoke. 
Georgia won game one of the series last night. That series is now even. Cal Stevens, six innings, two hits. Has a walk to batter, he struck out five, and Jackson Ross hit the plate one for two. What's so funny? Um, I was supposed to say Allstate, and I didn't say Allstate, and then you said Allstate at the end, and Paladino was yelling Allstate into my ears <laughs> the entire time. That's what just happened on live television. Seven strikeouts. Nobody would have known. No. And then you told me. No. We're not afraid to peel the curtain back, are we? You knew. Will Furnish on his way to the plate with the bases empty and two down. You've got the whole family in Oxford this weekend. We get to, yeah. Well, some of them. Yeah, some of them. My wife had not, she had not seen a game in this ballpark. I don't think she'd seen a game in an SEC ballpark, actually. Wow. This is the first one. And tonight, she'll get to see some 70-year-old DJs. We'll go to Funky. She can dance to Jimmy and Gene Harris. Fly ball to center field. Isaac has it. There are a couple in the MAC. There are a couple in the, nor the Northeast. And th that's all fine and dandy. Come on, line foul, nothing in one. Uh, but but none really compared to Oxford. Now, now the headline... Is, and Starkville's site claims that Starkville was named the best small town in the South. So it just goes, and Starkville is a lovely town. And one of my favorite trips, but there's enough different classifications where everybody gets, everybody gets a trophy. They're each winners. Yeah. It's like T-ball. Everybody gets a trophy. Nothing wrong with that. I like trophies. They, uh, they handed out a trophy in Philadelphia this weekend, huh? Allen Iverson wanted a statue. He got a trophy. <laughs> like that he, he patted himself on the head right after that on the <laughs> trophy, too. Like, hey, little guy, you look good. Ten best small college towns. I was right. This was just a couple of days ago. Saratoga Springs. Charlottesville, Virginia, lovely mm -hmm. town. Williamsburg, Virginia, sure. Hanover, New Hampshire, home of Dartmouth. Annapolis, great weekend town. Dakota <laughs> sends this one deep to left field. Amani Larry sends it to the fence and catch made at the wall. Larry sitting on three home runs in the season. That one gave a ride. Athens, Ohio. I, w I just wouldn't have it in the same category as Oxford, Mississippi. Well, that's why it's number one. Granville, Ohio. Frostburg, Maryland. Where's Frostburg State in the RPI? And two Oxfords in the top two spots. Oxford, Ohio at number two. Oxford, Mississippi at number one. Tough play down the line. Luke Hill lets Jackson Ross handle it. What phase are we in? It looked to be waxing. Thank you, Karate Kid. You are right. Trenton Lions leads off the eighth. Ground ball to the right side. Scooped up over at first by Hines. And the toss to Steven covering the bag. Ten straight retired. Like Cal Steven, who's only sitting at 86 pitches right now. Those wristbands are hair ties. He's got on his left wrist. Who that? Cal Steve. Steven, I didn't see. Let's look. Judd Udemark is 0 for 2. Couple of strikeouts. Jason Hughes pinch hitting. Here's the old one from Steven. They look at this performance by Cal Steven in the scope of what it does for Mississippi State in this series. Yeah, he had some room to work, he had a one nothing lead through five, and then they put a touchdown on the board in the sixth. But the bottom line is 
he is going to preserve the bullpen in a major way going into games two and three. He may preserve the entire bullpen. Mm -hmm. Strike three called. And the pinch hitting Hughes. That is the eighth strikeout against zero walks. He's faced three over the minimum. That time in a plus count more times than not tonight when he's there and wants to use the fastball. It's been elevated, but freezes Hughes right there. Two singles and a hit batter. And now Braden Randall coming up. And Randall just passed the reach. Now, Bamani Larry with a two out single. That'll take us back to the top of the order. Has Steven Stuff been two hit good tonight? Or is Ole Miss just kind of sleepwalking? I think the one thing he's done the entire night, he's pitched in plus counts the whole night. I mean, that, that, that's a huge advantage to where your stuff ticks up because you. You get the offense in more of a defensive mode. They start swinging at stuff that's more out of the zone, and, and Stevens has done a great job of throwing strike one and strike two. That helps your stuff play up. Luke Hill is 0 for 3 tonight. Came in hitting 302 in SEC play. Takes a fastball over the inside corner. That's 92 mile an hour fastball here in the eighth inning from Cal Steven. Foul back. And a three pitch strikeout to notch his ninth K. All right, thank you. Listen, Kyle Cheeseboro, nice play over at third. Here's Dakota Jordan leading off the ninth of Mississippi State with an 8 nothing lead. Bulldogs have won 21 of the last 27 head to head with Ole Miss. They have won seven consecutive series and will be in a position to take the eighth consecutive tomorrow night on ESPN2. Dakota Jordan's got a two run home run. He's two for four tonight. Connor Dennis hits a fastball over the inside third for a strikeout. 3,262 days since the last series win against Mississippi State. What do you got? What were you doing 3,262 days ago? Yeah, I might have been here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm told you were indeed here. You have an age today. Oh, but I have. Fouled off. Nothing in two. What's the biggest difference for Mississippi State this season versus the, I don't know what you would call it, state of morosity that they've been in the previous two seasons. I was talking to Jay Gotro, the hitting coach, recruiting coordinator from Mississippi State before the game, and, and the one that, that he pointed to was um, just the way that th this club carries himself and the way they have the entire year. There's a sense of confidence that maybe it's a little bit different than it was the last few years. It has played out. Two down, back-to-back -back strikeouts from Gunnar Dennis.
Isaac's spot is due up in the order. And we'll have a pinch hitter and an opportunity to talk about it before O'Brien comes to the plate. Michael O'Brien, freshman out of John Curtis Christian, down in Louisiana. Thirty-two versus thirty-two, and a breaking ball in for a strike. Nothing in two. Short hop by Lions behind the plate. Are you going to come by the uh, Ole Miss springish game tomorrow? Yeah, I want to see you in a hot dog eating contest. Mm -hmm. It'd be the only time I ever get a chance to do that. Chop foul. Have you ever done any kind of an eating contest? Nothing sanctioned, no. Which I would assume tomorrow is. It should be. Joey Chestnut's going to be here. You think he just shows up if it's not sanctioned? I met him before Cardinals game once. He was down on the field, and I peppered him with like a thousand questions. I'm just fascinated by how you prepare for that and yeah. what the recovery is. What, you peppering him with questions or <laughs> yeah, yeah. eating competition? I'm <laughs> <laughs> tonight for Steven. Hands it off to Tyson Harden. And his first pitch, 93 mile an hour fastballs, low and in. 2 and 0. Oh. And ERA just a hair over three. And for a strike, one on one. Bottom of the ninth, eight nothing Mississippi State. What do you got on our matchup tomorrow night? Um, I'm interested to see Liam Doyle because I, I think that the stuff is a little bit better than the number, not a little bit better, a lot better than the numbers have been so far this year. And Gerangelo Sanja, I haven't seen him in person yet. Have you seen him? Ambidextrous pitcher. was more right-handed dominant last weekend. But, I mean, his low to mid-90s from the right side, the stuff's real from the left side. Anytime you get a, get a chance to see a guy throw from – both arms in the same game. I think that's kind of cool. I think so too. I'm old enough to remember old oh, what's his name for Creighton. Was that Pat Vendetti? Pat Vendetti. Saw him pitch in the uh, Fayetteville Regional about a million years ago. Pitched in the big leagues. Mm -hmm. Swing and a miss. For Andrew Fisher and Tyson Harden picks up where Steven left off. 10 K's for Ole Miss tonight. Here's Ethan Lejay. Swings at the first and pulls that one foul. Make a play, you know? <laughs> just, just make a play. Got a pom pom. You can just put that thing down. Commitment. 
Nothing in two. And make that strike three. Ole Miss down to its last out with Ethan Groff coming to the plate. Mississippi State's up eight nothing in the ninth inning. They bring a kid, bring a kid into the game throwing 95 with that kind of a slide. It's a decent bullpen. My bad. Chopper to the left side and Mississippi State. Whoa, that one gets away. And a base runner with two out in the ninth on a throwing arrow from Logan Kohler. This is second error of the season for a Mississippi State team, which is third in the nation in fielding percentage. I don't think he ever got a handle on this. He just took the extra step to try to get a good grip, but Kohler never got it. Really no chance for Hines over at first base, so this one continues on. He's got plenty of time, but it's that extra step right there. And you can see kind of digging back into his glove, trying to get a handle on it. It was clear that he never really got it. So here's Jackson Ross. And the first pitch misses up in the zone to Ross. 1-0. On final in Athens, Missouri evens a series with Georgia. One win apiece with a 6-5 extra inning victory for the Tigers in Gainesville South Carolina won 10 to 3 over Florida they swap places in the standings in the east number one Arkansas won again now 30 and 3 beat Alabama 5-3 Kentucky has won the series with Auburn nine to one. They out hit them 14 to six. Stop the plate three and one. AM hammered Vandy run ruled them 15 nothing. They only needed seven innings out hit them 17 to four. And in the eighth inning in Knoxville over on ESPNU Tennessee leads LSU little roller to the right side. And that will do it. Mississippi State takes game.